I am Khaled and this is an in-depth, hands-on review of the Pocketbook Aero. In this video we will check out the highlights and the weaknesses, the most important software features and also see if the hardware can keep up with the competition of Kindle, Nook or Kobo. The Pocketbook Aero is in the same segment as the Kindle Oasis. In terms of pricing, with its display size of 7 inches and also with its asymmetrical design. Let's check out the design first. The bezels around the screen are relatively narrow, except for one side of the screen where you hold the e-reader. In terms of haptics, this is by far the best asymmetrical e-reader I've ever used. Not because the materials are better than on the Oasis, but because the form of the device is so very well done. Notice that angle at the end of the grip? Thanks to that, the e-reader rests super comfortably in my hand without its corner pressing into my palm. The product designer at Pocketbook definitely deserves a raise for that. It's attention to detail like that, that has a very positive effect in everyday use. Ok, so what about the rest? The Aero has a flush screen and buttons on the front. Those buttons can be reassigned as well. The key pressure points are concentrated to the middle portion of the buttons, so you can't press it on either end. That makes sense, because with the seamless design, it's almost impossible to quickly distinguish between them without looking. So a limited pressure point helps in reducing accidental pressing of the wrong button. The frame on the side feels high quality and looks almost like aluminum, but it's made out of plastic, just like on the Inkpad Lite. That style reminds me of high-end tablets and smartphones and works well for the Pocketbook era. The backside uses a ripped plastic, which doesn't look as premium as the rest, but helps very much in having a secure grip of the Pocketbook Aero. Although the Aero isn't made out of aluminum like the Kindle Oasis is, it still feels high-end. The Pocketbook Aero also has quite a full feature list. It's available with 16 or 64 gigs of internal storage, has Bluetooth and an inbuilt speaker, and is also IPX8 water resistant. With 1700 milliamps, the battery capacity is pretty large and lasts the Aero a few weeks. All of that comes at a cost. With a weight of 228 grams, the Pocketbook Aero isn't especially lightweight. For me, it's on the upper end of what I'd like a 7-inch device to have. It's still fine, but as always in an e-reader, lighter would be better. And for comparison, the Kindle Oasis only has 188 grams, despite having a metal body. Let's talk about the display. The Pocketbook Aero uses a 7-inch flush Ink Cutter 1200 display, that's currently one of the best ink technologies on the market, in terms of contrast levels. Pixel density is 300 ppi, which makes contents on the display sharp and crisp. So it comes at no surprise that the readability of the display is great. However, having seen other ink cutter 1200 displays, the blacks on the error screen don't look as saturated as on the Kindle Paperwhite or Kobo Libra 2, for example. Don't get me wrong, the error still looks great. But especially with activating the inbuilt lighting, the other two devices look at that better. The inbuilt LEDs also allow for color temperature adjustment, which is not too surprising at this price point. The LEDs for the front light are located on the side of the display, which makes this side lit. This is important to mention because imperfections on side lit screens are more eye catching. The lighting quality of the Pocketbook Aero is good. But again, not on the same very high level as on the mentioned Carter 1200 competition. There's a subtle brightness gradient visible from one side to the other. It's not bad by any means, but there's no denying it's there. The Aero doesn't have the almost perfect light distribution as the Kindle Paperwhite, Kobo Libra 2 or Tolino Vision 6, which all use the same display technology. The capacitive touchscreen works quickly and well. Let's talk about the software. They are finally at the point where I feel comfortable in saying that it is on the same level as Kindle, Kobo or Tolino. The software of the Pocketbook era feels more polished, responsive and intuitive than other Pocketbook e-readers have in the past. The home screen is using a familiar layout and is split into two parts. The latest books and the shop recommendations. The notification area on the very top can be opened with a click. And there you can get access to brightness control and a few other options. The shortcuts on the bottom will give you access to the most important functions. They can also be removed or replaced. 
That's just one example for the many customization options of the Pocketbook software. Usually only Android e-readers offer that many customization options, and even they lack some of the features the Pocketbook Aero offers. Let's talk a bit more about the ebook related functions. The library is without any doubt the best you can get on any e-reader at this time. It offers plenty of filtering and sorting options, so I didn't have any problems in organizing my ebooks. Even large ebook libraries can be managed comfortably. For organizing your ebooks, you can either use Calibre tags or simply make use of the file system structure. So you don't have to rearrange everything when switching to the error and can simply use one or the other, whichever you have already set up. The layout of the library might seem a bit unconventional when using it first. Instead of a horizontal layout like many other e-readers have, you scroll through the ebooks list vertically. It takes a short period of getting used to, but works great afterwards, especially since Pocketbook noticeably improved responsiveness. The note-taking function is also done nicely and offers a few different options. Notes can be taken with the virtual query keyboard or by directly writing on the page. Either way, you first have to switch to the write mode. And since the Pocketbook era only has a capacitive touchscreen, it makes sense to get a capacitive pen if you intend to make use of the handwriting function more. The dictionary function offers the largest selection of freely available dictionaries. You can find the whole list in the description below because it would simply take too much time to name them all. But not everything is great. Depending on the dictionary you use, many of them tend to recognize only infinitive words. You can edit the word manually you're looking for, which is a useful workaround. But I'd prefer it if that wasn't necessary. And last but not least, text styling. You can adjust the text in the usual ways and adapt margins, line height, size, and font type. You can also install your own fonts quite easily. Using PDFs on Pocketbook devices is always a pleasure because the software offers a couple of useful viewing options. The error is no exception. Right off the bat, the Pocketbook error shines with high pixel density. Even large format PDF files can be viewed with really small text and it's still perfectly readable. Of course, you don't want to read super tiny text like that, but it gives you a great overview of the page and being able to skim through text like this helps a lot. To actually improve readability, you can simply zoom in using pinch to zoom or by using the different PDF modes. Those are not quite as extensive as on Onyx Books e-readers, but still best in class when comparing the Pocketbook era to Kindle, Kobo, Nook or Tolino. The default mode when opening PDF files is the scrolling mode. As the name suggests, you can just scroll through the whole PDF file vertically that way. And I was surprised that it worked quite smoothly even for more complex and larger files. The margin crop function comes in handy to remove unwanted white space around the actual text. That way you can zoom in on the content without losing anything. This can be done manually or automatically. My personal favorite is the columns mode. Using it will zoom in on one quarter or one sixth of the page, depending on which option you choose. The cropped view is then advanced one after the other, from top to bottom and then from left to right until you reach the end of the page. This mode is super helpful when reading scientific papers. Using the columns mode and turning the error into landscape makes large PDF files perfectly readable. Note-taking works the same way as mentioned earlier, with the QWERTY keyboard or by activating the handwriting mode to directly take notes on the page. Notes made with the QWERTY keyboard can be exported to an HTML file, handwritten notes can't be. Those will only show up with a reference on where it was created, but not what was actually written on the page. Same as many other manufacturers, Pocketbook started to focus on audiobooks a lot more in recent years. The Pocketbook era is the peak of this development. It not only includes Bluetooth for wireless headphones or speakers, but actually includes a speaker directly on the device. Of course, that's not entirely new because a few Chinese Android e-readers and many e-ink tablets do have speakers as well. But it's something new for a mainstream manufacturer like Pocketbook. And you can also use the audio function through wired headphones with a 3.5 mm headphones jack because Pocketbook includes a USB-C to 3.5 mm adapter in the box. So how does it actually work? 
I couldn't get it working via Bluetooth at first. Pairing my Samsung Galaxy Buds was no problem and I was actually able to control the play, pause and skip functions through the Galaxy Buds, but at first I didn't get any audio when playing an audiobook. Only after restarting the Pocketbook era did I finally get output through the headphones. After that initial problem, setting it up, everything worked like a charm afterwards. At least up until I put the buds back into their case, because for the inbuilt speaker to actually start putting out anything, you have to manually turn off Bluetooth, even though the headphone connection wasn't active anymore. So that's something Pocketbook has to smooth out with future firmware updates, in my opinion. As for the audio quality of the inbuilt speaker, I just wouldn't recommend turning it up too loud because it gets a bit distorted with louder volume. So that's mainly something for a quieter room setting in my opinion. Organizing your audiobooks works well and is done through the dedicated audio app. I'd only wish that the audiobooks were also available in the general ebook library to have everything in one place and being able to filter and sort them with the inbuilt library options. A very nice feature is the text-to-speech function, which works very well. You can use it in any book and simply open the function to let the device read the contents of the books to you. You have quite a few voice and language options to choose from in an overlay menu, after which they are downloaded automatically. You can also adjust the reading speed. The text-to-speech function can be useful to just keep reading when you're actually doing something else, but it can also be helpful when someone has a visual impairment or is learning how to read. The current reading position is indicated by an underline. One of the biggest weaknesses of Pocketbook in the past was its ebook store. That's not the case anymore. Together with the cloud integration, Pocketbook has completely reworked the shop a few years ago. It not only looks nicer, but it works much better as well. Each purchase is automatically synced with the Pocketbook Cloud and the e-reader. The shop includes ebooks and audiobooks alike. There's really only one thing which I actually dislike about the whole shop experience, and that is the search function. I get that it's hard to do this right, but simply put, the search in the Pocketbook shop sucks. It often shows my desired book on lower positions instead of in the first spot where it should be. Just an example, looking up Lord of the Rings would show me the actual book only on the 14th spot of my search. So something else I want to mention specifically is the privacy situation in Pocketbook. Not because it's bad, but because it's an awesome example of how a company should approach this topic. With some other manufacturers, you can't even get the e-reader running without creating a user account. Others have limited software functions when not logging into an account. Not so with the Pocketbook error. You can just skip anything connectivity related and start up the e-reader without having to create an account anywhere. You can even browse the ebook store without logging in. And you can also disable anonymous diagnostic information the e-reader is sending to Pocketbook. So if you care about data privacy, the Pocketbook error is actually a great example that it can be done even when usually everything is connected to the web. My experience with the Pocketbook era has been very positive. The build quality is great and the haptics are amazing. I already said it, but need to mention it again. The attention to detail on creating the era helps so much in everyday use. Even though the era is not the lightest of the bunch, it's still one of the most comfortable to hold thanks to the design. Another strong point of the Pocketbook era is the software. It feels polished and is easy to use despite being packed with features. It also offers useful customization options which others are missing. The only downside for me personally is the not so perfect screen. Like I said, it's not bad by any means, but I had higher expectations because I've seen other e-ink Carter 1200 devices with almost perfect displays. But as the saying goes, expectations are the thief of joy. After I put aside my expectations, I actually enjoyed using the Pocketbook era very much and think it's a very nice alternative to the likes of Kindle Oasis or Kobo Libra 2. Take a look, you won't regret it. I'd really appreciate it if you liked this video and subscribe to the channel to help out with the YouTube algorithm and to not miss any future videos. 
It just takes a second and is free, but would help me out tremendously. Thanks for your time and see you in the next one.